The Defence of the Realm Act was introduced on the 8th of August. It actually was passed on the 8th of August 1914, four days after the war broke out, and it was a very short act. And essentially what it did was it empowered the government to introduce a whole series of regulations to govern people's lives and organise them, uh, to direct them around the war effort. And not only did it do that, but it then also empowered the government to pass on to the Navy and military the power to enforce those acts. Um, so the act was amended at least six times and there were a whole series of regulations introduced and they governed people's lives in a series of ways. Um, I suppose the first thing they did is that they attempted to protect the security of the state in wartime. The second thing they did was they attempted to direct resources towards the war effort, both directly to the military, but also to the war economy. And then the third thing they did was they attempted to ensure that uh, any seditious activity didn't occur during the war. A very important thing that it did very early on was it attempted to ensure that information wasn't being passed out of the United Kingdom to those who were opposing the United Kingdom in the war. So it restricted the ab ability of people to communicate with uh, people in, in Germany and in Austria, etc. So letters were restricted and travel were restricted to those places. But perhaps most importantly in that regard, uh, thousands of uh, people who were living in Britain and Ireland were arrested in the immediate aftermath of the war under the Defence of the Realm Act uh, because they were Germans or Austrians or of German or Austrian origin. Sometimes they were living in Britain and Ireland, sometimes they were simply unlucky enough to have been on holidays in Britain and Ireland when the war broke out and they were arrested as enemy aliens. Um, the fear being that they would form some sort of filth column within the state. Other things that the regulations restricted people in were in terms of, there was lots of re restrictions around people's access to alcohol uh, because, you know, engagement with alcohol was seen as damaging the war effort. So uh, the strength of alcohol, for instance, how strong it could be was, was, was restricted. Uh, the times that alcohol could be served was restricted. Um, so the, the, the opening hours of pubs were, were, were closed down quite significantly uh, during the wartime. Uh, the rights to serve alcohol to particular people were restricted, so particularly the right to, al to serve alcohol to soldiers was restricted. In Ireland, uh, you had people who were arrested for all that uh, all those kinds of uh, reasons, you know, for selling alcohol when they shouldn't have been uh, doing so, uh, for lighting fires in areas that were restricted. Perhaps uh, the fear was that they were signalling to the enemy. Um, very often uh, they were tried and they were fined rather than imprisoned. But there were a group of people in Ireland who um, were severely imposed upon by the Defence of the Realm Act and those were nationalists who were either organising seditious activity or organising anti-recruitment activity. Uh, and uh, they were acted against in a number of ways under the Defence of the Realm Act. Um, newspapers or publications by nationalists that were uh, either promoting anti-war material or opposing recruitment were shut down in late 1914 and again some in 1915. Uh, Nationalist activists who were making anti-recruitment speeches uh, were arrested. Uh, nationalists who were posti posting up anti-recruitment posters were arrested. And particularly from the summer of 1915, quite a number of them were sent to prison for reasonably lengthy sentences. Uh, it wasn't just nationalists, but pacifists who opposed the war effort were also arrested and prosecuted for uh, you know, anti-recruitment and anti-war efforts. Obviously one of the areas in which it impacted upon Irish people in a, in a significant way was the production of food. Uh, you know, farmers' agricultural production was directed into certain areas to ensure that, that they would contribute to the war effort. And there was quite a degree of resentment about that. Another area in which uh, people certainly resented was certainly access to alcohol and the restriction of the, around their access to alcohol. But also there was a sense of, you know, the fact that their letters, their post could be regularly looked at. Um, by the middle of the war, the, the, the war office censors were inspecting you know, tens of thousands of letters, uh, ordinary communications between ordinary people. Uh, and that was certainly impacting upon people's lives.